Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, I'm Joe. Players prefer to keep track of their health scores and better equipments in the games. Games are getting longer and longer, with some having over 100 hours of content. Allowing the player to save their game is one of the most essential features in your game. In my previous two episodes, we have talked about how to save and load data by player prep and civilization, binary formatter. In this episode, we are taking a look at how to save and load the data by another method, JSON. Here are the steps I needed to follow. First, I will introduce what is JSON, what's the differences between JSON and JavaScript, how to convert an object into the JSON. Second, we will use the new concept to save and load the coins, diamonds, player position, enemies' positions, and their status. As always, the link for the project repository is on the description below. You can download the starting project or completed project from my Google Drive. Also, I have uploaded all of the assets and the screenshots on my GitHub. Okay, let's get started. First thing first, what is JSON? JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation. It's a minimal readable format for stretching data. It is used to transmit data between a server and web application. JSON is a lightweight format for storing and transporting data. The features are self-describing and easy to understand. Let's take a look at the structure of the JSON. There are two important parts that make up JSON, keys and values. Together, they make a key-value pair. A key is always a string enclosed in quotation marks. A value can be an associative array of values, Boolean expression, integer or float number, string or object. Here is one simple example of JSON format. We have an object called hero. Inside the query braces, each key match with one value. Each value has different types such as the string, boolean, integer or float number, even array. The query braces is used for object and square brackets is used for array. So JSON is just a readable format for storing and transporting data. All names in JSON must be wrapped in double quotes. Well, the JavaScript is a programming language. By the way, JavaScript has built-in support for conversion between JSON and JavaScript object. To convert an object to JSON data, you can use json.stringfy methods. To create JavaScript object from JSON data, you can use json.parse. This is the conversions on JavaScript. How about in c -sharp script? The JSON object itself is represented by a string type. By passing this data as a string, c -sharp language can easily recreate JSON object from the string as a constructor argument. In serialization, if you want to convert an object into string of bytes, we will use binary format .serialize. If you want to load the data, we have to convert the field string into an object. We will use binary format .deserialize methods. So in JSON, we use JSON utility to JSON methods to convert a saved object into JSON type. In the loading process, we use JSON utility from JSON methods to return the saved object bank from the JSON type. All right, after understanding these concepts, let's get into our project. So just open up Unity, and currently we already have something on here. We have one single class called save. Inside this save class, we have declared several variables that we want to save in this game, such as the coins number, diamonds number, player position, all of the enemy's positions, and their status. Go to game manuscript. If you want to serialize and deserialize an object, we have to use binary formatter class. So we have to use this namespace first. System.io is another namespace we use whenever we want to work with fields on our operating systems. We can press the plus button to basically clean up our code a bit. Once we press the save or load button, we will call one of functions. In our previous episode, we save and load data by serialization binary formatter. Also, we have created one function called create save game object. Focus on here, the return type is save type instead of the void. We will have the instance of save class and save each data into this object. We will save our game coins count, diamonds count, player position, 
enemy's positions and their statics. Finally, return this instance save object. We want to convert this save object into JSON for saving our data in this episode. Alright, let's create two functions called save by JSON and load by JSON. Then remove or command our previous functions inside the save button and load button function. Actually, there is a similar way as save by serialization. If we want to save the data by serialization, we have to convert the object type into string of bytes. Likewise, if we want to save the data by JSON, we also have to convert the same object type into JSON type. As we talked about before, the JSON object itself is represented by a string type. Create a save instance with all the data current session saved into it. Since JSON object itself is represented by a string type, we create one string type variable called JSON string. We use two JSON methods on the JSON utility class. The parameter should be our save object. This method returns object data in JSON format. Then we create one new string writer. The path we choose to use application.datapath. Also, you can use the application.persistence data pass. But the only difference for me is that we can find the field on my computer by using data pass. And for the persistent data pass, the field is hidden by default. Now we can write the data information to our JSON data.txt field. String write.write methods writes a string to the string. Finally, don't forget to close the current string writer object and the underlying string. We can port debug.log to check the result in our game. Inside load function, first we have to check whether the JSON data.txt field exists or not. If it does, we can load our game. Otherwise, it looks to the console that there is no save field in this game. After completing loading the game, we can assign each variable from save object to our game values. The string reader class can read characters from a string of bytes. Let's create an instance of string reader and the parameter is the data path. Then we used read to end methods to read the JSON text information directly from a field and return the JSON type. After that, don't forget to close the current string reader object. We want to convert the JSON string type into the object type. We use from JSON methods on the JSON utility class. The parameter should be the string type. If you find the red line, that's because this function is a generic parameter so that we have to declare what kind of type we want to convert. In this case, we can say the type should be save, just like the cast type in our serialization function. Once we load the data, we can assign each data to our game value. Actually, there is the same group inside the load by deserialization function. We can directly copy this part and paste the enter here. Later, we might make one customer function to make our code clean. If I save the script and switch bank, we can press the load button first and test whether our data field exists or not. Then we press the save button. After a couple of seconds, after we destroy 4 enemies and achieve more coins and diamonds and stand in different position, once we press the load button, our player will still come back to his saving positions with the correct coins diamonds number. Also, all of the enemies and the statics are the extremely the same before saving.
we can go back to find our JSON data field to check it out. We can find one field inside our assets folder called JSON data. Let's open up by editor. We can see that there is a long string inside this editor in JSON format. The first key is our coins number, and the value has saved to 10, which means we have 10 coins before pressing the save button. The data field has saved all of the information in JSON format. We can simply change their positions for easy to read. We can clearly see our enemy's position x values is one array because inside the save class, we declare one list to store off the information about the enemy position x. So we can find one disadvantages of the JSON. If we did not use the return button to replace each keys and his values, it's hard for us to read just like the binary format. If we have a bunch of information we have to save, this field will be hard for us to read as well. So do we have another method to save and load the data and the meanwhile provides one field easy for us to read? Alright, this is the end of this video. In the next video, we will talk about the last key concept of saving and loading game in Unity, XML. If you are curious about another method of saving and loading data in Unity, you can find more links in the description below. Hopefully you can enjoy the third episode of this series. If you enjoyed this video and found helpful, be sure to hit the like button and share with friends and subscribe to my channel. Stay tuned for future updates from my channel. There is much more to come. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.